Hi, I'm James Glass with James Glass Company, and I want to talk a little bit about PEX. Um, I use PEX pretty exclusively, PEX and a combination of copper, depending upon the application. We're here at my personal house at 507 7th Street in Roanoke, Virginia, and uh, I'm completely rewiring, replumbing, restructuring. Uh, it's a massive renovation over here, and PEX is a plumbing product. It stands for cross-link polyethylene. Uh, it's not to be confused with polybutylene, which is a completely different product, even though it's gray and it's sort of a flexible pipe like this. Uh, polybutylene is a, is a low-quality product. Uh, there were a lot of problems, particularly with compression fittings. Um, it was used a lot in manufactured homes like trailers. PEX is a high-quality product, um, has a lot going for it, can expand up to 15%. Water freezes, expands 9%, so it, it withstands freezing better than copper. Not that you should leave your water on. You should always turn your water off if you're away. Um, but nonetheless, it's a little more forgiving. It's also really easy to work with. I'm going to be showing you how to make a PEX connection joint uh, uh, today also. Right now, let me show you this little manifold. Uh, I may, you can purchase these manifolds. I prefer to make my own. Uh, this connects to the master shutoff valve uh, in the house, which is also a PEX product. I have uh, K-thickness copper coming in from the, the uh, meter from the street. It was already here. I didn't do it. But it's in good shape, so I'm going to leave it. And uh, I'll, I'll get a video later, and I'll show you where this connects in the house. But basically, there's a master shutoff valve that goes right here. Turning that, it's a quarter turn valve, just like one of these. Turning that shuts water off to the whole house. Barring that, I like to make this manifold system, which I'm almost finished with. Uh, this is the cold water manifold. There'll be a, a similar one for hot water. Um, and here's how the manifold system works. Incoming water pressure from the city, in this case, comes in and distributes around this ring. <clears throat> Each one of these goes to a dedicated area of the home. You can run a dedicated coupleless line to each fixture. However, this is a small home and that's way overkill. What I'm doing is I'm running a dedicated cold and hot circuit to each area. So this is the cold water for the upstairs bathroom. This is the cold water for the downstairs bathroom. This is the cold water for the kitchen. This is the feed for the hot water heater. This, if you get a close-up of this, you'll notice that this is a uh, Interesting little coupling. I have a little plug here on the end. This is a diagnostic port. When I replumb a house and I put in a new master shutoff valve, I always have one diagnostic port here so I can easily hook up and check water pressure. So if I ever had question to check my water pressure from the street, uh, this would normally be in the off position while the rest of them would be open. I can close this valve. I can unscrew this little coupler on the end. I can hook my pressure gauge to it. And then I can turn it on and I can check pressure without having to cut into the line. It takes literally five minutes to add this, and it's wonderful for future diagnostics. Um, I, I think it should be a minimum, I think it should be minimum prescriptive building code that a diagnostic port be added. But it's not. But I do it anyway. This is going to go to the outside front spigot. Uh, this is going to this port is going to go to the outside rear spigot. And this port is extra. I'll have a shutoff valve on here with a plug, and if I ever needed to add another cold water circuit uh, for any reason, like let's say I wanted to put a slop sink down in the basement or something, I would have it here. Uh, this, however, will just go to a shutoff valve, go to a plug, and be done. So that's the nice thing about the manifold uh, in terms of like quick and easy turnoff. Remember, this one's going to the hot water heater. Uh, this will be the other cool thing about PEX is that all the lines coming off here will be blue. You can buy this in red, white, and blue. I, I use white for the manifolds, blue for the cold water lines, and then I use red for all the hot water lines. So you can tell at a glance whether you're looking at a hot or cold uh, supply. So everything coming off of these fittings will be blue. But this one goes to the water heater, like I was saying, and it will go into the inlet of the water heater, and you can either use a tank or tankless system. And then coming out of the outlet of the water heating system, um, you're going to have I'm going to have another manifold that looks just like this. It'll be ran out of red uh, packs, and there'll be a upstairs bathroom, downstairs bathroom, kitchen uh, circuit. And so, uh, obviously, I don't need hot water for the spigots, so this will simply supply the cold water to the outside spigots. So there'll be I'll have a manifold that looks like this, just a little bit smaller, uh, and there'll be three circuits. 
and then I can take a hot and cold off of each of my manifolds, run them to my bathroom. And the advantage of doing a manifold system like this isn't just elegance, and it isn't just easy uh, future service. You'll notice that the water comes in and runs around this ring. And that essentially creates a parallel circuit for the water. So I have equal amounts of pressure coming in each side at all times. So if someone's using the shower in one bathroom and they flush the toilet in another bathroom, I'm going to have water, equalized water pressure, coming in from both areas to distribute. If I had simply run a manifold that terminated at the end, if there's water usage down, the, down in that series circuit, by the time it gets to the end, there's going to be a lot less water pressure. So if someone's taking a shower and they flush a toilet, what's going to happen is you'll notice a pressure differential in the house and, of course, there'll be a drop in cold water pressure, the shower will get real hot, people scream, ah, and then they burn up until the toilet tank fills. But by doing this system, I can equalize the pressure coming in from both angles. Every time water runs out of this, water is coming at it from this angle, water is coming at it from this angle. So this balances the system really nicely. Okay, so now let's look at our PEX connection. What I've done here is, and obviously, you know, I've made these quarter turn valves for easy shutoff. So what I've got is my PEX, which I've already measured and cut using my handy PEX cutter. Right. Made sure the ends were clean and straight. There are three ways to connect PEX, copper compression rings, stainless steel compression rings, and expansion fitting. I won't get into the details of the three ways, but I believe the best way is this copper compression ring. This, can, this is tested at 200 PSI. It's, it shouldn't be maintained at 200 PSI, but this really holds. It slides over the end, like this. Right in there. See. And then, in this case, I'm going to be um, installing this little guy right in here like that. So I want to put my brass barbed fitting into my pecs. Pops right in. And I'm going to slide that down. Got about a 2 millimeter, 1.5 to 2 millimeter space. And I want to hold it in place a little bit. I don't want friction to get the best of me. So I'm very, very lightly, without significantly deforming the ring, I'm going to take this adjustable plier and I'm going to put just a tiny amount of pressure. I mean, I barely squeezed it. Just enough to give it some friction. And now I'm going to use this PEX tool. This is made by a company uh, called Zern. They make a lot of PEX products. This is basically a compression device that grabs that copper ring and compresses it exactly the right amount on the fitting. Here's another compression device. This one's for 3 quarter, down to 3 eighths, because this has a removable head. And here in the box, you'll see the other heads. And so, in this case, I've got the three-quarter inch die in here for compressing three-quarter inch rings. This one does not have a removable head. If this wears out, you either replace the tool or replace the heads. It's always going to do half inch. So, and you'll notice these tools are pretty large. So if you're doing renovation work in tight areas, you can get miniature versions of these tools, um, which allows you to get inside rafters and tight spaces. So I've got my copper compression ring on, my brass fitting with the PEX. And if, can you get in there? Yeah, get in there close. I'm going to line it up so it's completely centered. Can you see that? I want to get equal straight compression. I want to be true. And I want to be right in the middle. See how that's right in the middle? And now it's just a matter of compressing it. That's it. That's it. Now I have a joint that's tested to 200 PSI that regularly withstands up to 100 uh, PSI, more than any domestic water, water system. And this PEX, which is red, white, and blue, is rated for all domestic hot water systems. Um, if you're going to do in for heating, there's a different kind of PEX for that. It, it's an orange colored PEX. It's rated for higher temperatures. The, you can pretty much PEX an entire home. There are some limitations. You can't run packs within 18 inches of, a, of a, a water heating device, like a tanked or tankless heater. So you can purchase these nice copper brass fittings that, that have a brass fitting for the steel on the water heater, have a PEX barb on the other end, very nice. So, but otherwise you can PEX everything. 
The advantage here over copper is I can buy rolls of PEX up to a thousand feet long. So I can run coupleless joints in interior walls. So that means there's, I've radically reduced the chance of leakage. I can run a dedicated circuit from this shutoff valve down in the basement or wherever your water comes in all the way to whatever room it needs to go to and I can run a continuous circuit with no elbows, no joints. This stuff is pretty flexible. It, there's a lot of factory fittings if I need to do a 90. There's copper stub outs if I need to have a copper stub out coming out of a wall instead of PEX coming out of the wall. There's a versatile amount, a wide range of products that, make, that makes PEX very versatile. There's just a wonderful amount of things you can do. So that's basically the introduction to PEX. Uh, and that's how simple it is to connect it. That's pretty much how PEX works. You can do cool stuff like make manifolds. I made this whole thing in about 30 minutes. You can also purchase these manifolds. They're a couple hundred bucks. I made this manifold for about 60. And plus it's custom to the house. I don't have any extra circuits. Thanks for watching the video. This was the, the video here on uh, PEX, how to connect PEX, how to work with PEX.